Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another Laravel Lair tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're gonna take the Joy Bonnet that we made last week and we're going to make a project enclosure out of it. So the first thing we're gonna do is to bring these things into this new document. So I'll right click and insert into current design. We'll just go ahead and hit okay, let that get in there. I'm going to import this Raspberry Pi Zero that I made a couple months ago and said okay. So now that they're both inside here, we can start making uh, adjustments to them. So the first thing I need to do is kind of line up the headers with each other. So the Raspberry Pi Zero will go underneath the Joy Bonnet. So I'm gonna move that down a bit. And what I'm gonna do is I need to match up this header with this female header up here underneath the Joy Bonnet. To do that, a real easy way to do that is with the Align tool. So I'm gonna search for that, Align. It's probably under Modify. And I I'm gonna hover over the center of this guy here. So that's selected blue, and then the next spot will be underneath the joy bonnet right there. I'll need to flip this in the right order that way, and then angle it so it's the right way. I gotta keep playing with these until I get something right, like that, that looks good. And they're perfectly centered, so if I look at them from ever, any other side, you can see there's a little bit of an offset here, that's because this header on the joy bonnet is a little bit bigger than the one on the pie, but it's okay. And if you also look at it from this direction underneath the board, you'll notice that the boards are offset a little bit. If you look at the actual components in real meat space, you can see that there is a little bit of gap and you can kind of figure out how much of distance you need. But for this, I think it works okay. The next thing we're gonna do is start working on our case. So before that, we need to hit this button here where it says capture position, and that's going to make this little thing in our timeline and we can always reference this if we ever want to move something we can go into this captured timeline thing captured position and update the positions of any components in this case it's just two of them so that's awesome let's make a new component and we'll name that case that's where we're going to do all of our edits and for the case so it's active component now whenever we make something in here our thing will reflect it down here in the timeline so i'm going to start by making a construction plane. This is an offset construction plane, and this is gonna allow you to make a offset plane. I'm gonna click on that and select this top piece of the joystick. This is the kind of the biggest thing of the, the of, this is the tallest component in the joy bonnet. So I'm gonna click on that, hit okay. Now I have this kind of orange looking thing. I'm, gonna, I'm going to select that like here, and then I'm going to create a sketch from that. So now with that sketch, I am going to project some edges from the from the boards. So I'm actually gonna do this one. It looks like the, the bonnet is outside more, so I'm gonna click on that one. That's being projected. The sides are probably that one. And over here, if I look at it from the top view, I can see which one sticks out a little bit more. That's the pie. So I'm gonna reference that one, and then this one on the joy bonnet. So now I got these four lines. They're pretty much the outer outlines. They're referencing both the joy bonnet and the Raspberry Pi because we want to contain the enclosure within both of them equally. So now I'll hit OK. Those are our main things. I'm gonna make a rectangle and then draw out a rectangle that encompasses the whole thing. I'll bring open our user parameters and show you that I have one created margin. I'm gonna change the value to two here and I'm gonna use this in our, in our sketch dimension. So I'm gonna dimension out these edges from these, these purple lines, which are the actual projections. So I'm gonna make this margin like this and then do that for all four sides, so I can just do that. Probably copy that in my clipboard so I can get a better uh, speed out of this. So I can just paste that in, because I do need to do it four different times. So now I got that. If I ever want to update the kind of main enclosure, I can do that. I can just change this here, say three, and it updates automatically and everything stays uh, positioned correctly. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extrude this out. So I wanna encompass uh, most of the, most of the probably just half of these two things. So I'm gonna bring this down probably right there. Eight millimeters is fine, I think. 
I'll do that. We can update it later. I'll hit OK. Next thing I'll do is put some fillets on these edges because I'm going to do a shell and I want to do those fillets before I do the shell. So I'll make this a fillet of five. Go underneath this, select that surface and shell that out to 1.5 millimeters. So now I got that. And I can see that all the USB ports coming off of the Pi have a little bit of clearance here, which is okay. I think that'll work well. Cool. Next thing I'm going to do is kind of play around with the, actually, let me show you something real quick. So if I go and activate this main assembly, I can see all of the stuff here that we, like we did, I'm going to update this position here. So I'm going to double click on that position and I'm going to bring the joy bonnet up. So let's say we're using the taller headers, the male headers on the Raspberry Pi. If they were taller, then that means this guy would get kind of floated up there. Maybe not that much, but definitely would be uh, a more distance between them. Now, if I hit finish capture, you'll notice that the case has kind of updated with that. So that's really one of the main reasons why I'm using this plane, because no matter where the joy bonnet goes, this case will update with it. So I'm going to undo that and go back to that area. That's now where our headers are flush with each other. I'm using short headers. So that's why I'm designing it where these two headers are bu right butted up flush with each other. All right, next thing I'm going to do is make some cutouts, but let's go back into that case component. I got to activate it before I do anything with it. I'm going to name this top case and I'll go ahead and name that sketch that we did. The first one, I'll call that also top case. I'm going to make a new sketch, but I'm going to click on this surface first because I want to make the sketch be derived from that surface. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that into its own sketch by hitting P on my keyboard that projects that. And now I can start projecting some other things, mainly uh, the PCB. So I'll hit P on my keyboard again, and then just select that whole top surface of the PCB. And that gives me all of the squares that I need, but I don't want them to be squares. I want them to be circles, these little button cutouts. I'm going to work there first. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to offset this, uh, this edge here, this profile, which is the, the joystick. I'm going to give it a small offset, maybe negative 0.2. And then I'll do something cool where instead of having to select this and this and then extrude to make a cut, I'm actually going to just double click on that. One of these lines, it'll select the whole loop chain and then I can hit X and that'll make that into a construction plane. So it will effectively make it so you can't select it and that's what I want. So now I can extrude that out, bring back the top case and then I can go on the inside, hide these components and say, I want the extent to object and being the inside of this area here. And that way it is dynamic and parametric. I'll hit OK. And now I got my cutout for my joystick, my analog joystick. Cool. I'm going to go back into this and let's modify this and change it to button cutouts because that's what it is. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to make some circles, circle cutouts. So I'm going to figure out where the center of these things are going like that. That's in the center. I'll make this a seven millimeters and then I'll do the same thing for these guys. So I can just hover over where I think is the center on the outer edges and then just accept those by hitting enter like this. Click enter to accept that diameter and we just do the same thing for this last one here. Seven enter. Cool. And then again, I can do that trick where I double click. I'm just holding down shift now to make this a whole selection Hit X. So now I don't have to worry about selecting all those cutouts that intersect with the circles. I'll select these guys, extrude them out. You know what? I'm going to hit cancel on that. Hit stop sketch. I'm going to double click on this extrude that we did, the one that we did for the cutout. And I will just add these circles to that extrude selection. So I don't have to make double uh, things. So I can do everything with this one extrude. Awesome. I'm going to go back into the buttons cutout and I'm actually going to make these uh, these slots. I don't want these to be circles. I want them to be kind of like slots. If you look at the, the Super Nintendo controller, they have kind of these, these elongated rectangles. So that's what I'm going to make. But first, I want to get the center circles in here from the buttons. So I can do that by projecting in those. So I can just click on those top surfaces like that, project them into that same sketch that I'm in and then I can start working on those slots. I'm going to use the slot tool. If you haven't used the slot tool before, it's, it's great for making slots. I'll tell you that. I'm going to type in slot. There's a couple different ones. The one I want to use is the center point slot. 
That's going to allow me to select the center, bring it out to 2.5, let's say, click on that, and I can bring out the height. I want it to be like 3.5, I think is a good height. Hit enter on that, and then um, I can adjust that if I need to. I'll put a sketch dimension, maybe make this 3.5. And then what I can do is grab this center here, and then bring it in there and lock it in there with the collinear. I automatically did it because I just dropped it into that center. I'll do the same thing. Let's watch that again. Center point slot, click in the center. I'll make this, uh, what is it, 3.5 divided by 2. Enter, click on that, and then I'll make this uh, 3.5 as well, like that. And if I move this around, I can lock it into that. When that circle comes up, that little blue circle, that'll give me a collinear constraint, or co coincident constraint, sorry. And that look is looking pretty good. So now if I hit stop sketch, I can bring back the top case, double click on that first extrude that we did, and just add this to it. You can see what happened here is it's getting cut off. And that's because these aren't construction lines yet. So I can go back in there, make these construction lines. Awesome. Stop the sketch, go back into that, select these guys. I probably should have did a another thing here where these are these circles need to be con um, construction lines as well. But looks like we did it. We did just fine with it. All right, so it's looking good. Those are our cutouts. Now that that's done, we can probably make our buttons. Let's make our buttons. I want the buttons to be made off of this profile. This is the inside of the case the inner lining of it. So with it selected, I'll just create a new sketch. That gets projected automatically. And I can offset these guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset these to make these end stops for these buttons. So I'll just keep offsetting. Enter, offset, click, enter. It's got one as a default, which is great for, for this one. Let's see if these line up OK. Yeah, it looks like there's enough clearance between these two buttons, or these two sketch profiles, so I don't have to worry about kind of making them smaller or anything. And I'll make some, some other offsets going on the inside now this way. Probably a little bit of a clearance, maybe 0.3 is a good number. So I'm going to get that in my keyboard, in my clipboard, and then paste that. Oh, it looks like it's, uh, sometimes this, this happens where it gets confused, Fusion gets confused and doesn't know uh, which way you want to go. So it's unfortunate, but hey, we'll, we'll, we'll work around it. Now it's working. I'm just Sometimes it needs to be a positive. Other times it needs to be a negative. Depends on where you click on it, I guess, and if the moon is full or not. All right, so now that we've got those, I can create a new extrusion because these are going to be new bodies and select all these guys like that. You could have made some construction planes to make it easier. Or construction lines would have made it so I didn't have to click on all of these circles, but I'm already in here doing it, so I can't stop. I'm going to make these one millimeter thick going downwards, and they're going to be new bodies, so make sure it's selected new body. We don't want to join it to it. And now I can bring back that sketch because it likes to get hidden, and I'm going to select those inner parts and bring them upwards instead of down. So up like this until it says negative three, which is really a positive three. Now I got some buttons. Look at those buttons. If I do a section analysis, we can kind of see those buttons have a little bit of clearance from uh, from the edges here. There's no clearance from from the end stopper to here, but that's okay. And if we bring back the joy bonnet, you'll see that they're resting right on top of those little actuators. So that'll that'll be okay. That'll be pretty good. All right. Next thing we're going to do is. We're going to make a group here just to kind of organize this stuff. I'm going to call this buttons and throw all the buttons in that folder. So throw them in there. There we go. That's looking good. I think the next thing we need to do is create um, standoffs. So we need a way to mount and secure the bottom of the, the whole PCB. We need to secure it to this case, this half of the case. So we're going to do that by projecting, we'll create a new sketch and we'll project in these circles and then kind of make these look standoff looking things. So let's go ahead and click on this piece here. This is the inner wall. That's where I want my standoffs to start to extrude from. So I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, just create sketch like that. And then I'll project in some of these mounting holes. I probably just need to connect this one and this one. I think I did a dot and not a 
circle. Make sure you select the correct circle. There we go. Now I can hide the joy bonnet. And I'm just going to make these two standoffs here and then mirror it so that I don't have to make all four of them. That'll kind of quicken up the job a little bit. I'll hit OK on that project that I'm still there. And then I'll use the line tool. I'm going to use this line tool to make a little kind of rectangle type thing. I just need two lines and now I get this. Let me hide that sketch. I don't know what that sketch is. What is that sketch? Let me hit stop. These are the buttons. So let me name this buttons. Those are the buttons that we made. And this is going to be the standoffs. So what I'm going to do is go back into that standoffs. I'm going to make these straight lines that are horizontal or vertical. There's a there's a constraint that can do that for us. This one here. Click on that, make that one as well. And now I got a little bit of degrees of freedom. So you can see I can move these around. I want to lock these in place with a sketch dimension. So I'll say from here to here should be two millimeters. And from here to here should be two millimeters as well. I'm also going to make a new circle. So going from the center of this projected circle, I'm going to make this 2.2 millimeters and turn this into a construction plane. That way I have a smaller hole when I 3D printer it, where I CNC mill it, I'll be able to create these threads that lock into, um, to, into the material a little bit better. So it doesn't look like it can select this profile anymore. It doesn't look like a, it wants to be selected. So it's not being closed. So make sure these are all correct. They look correct to me. It's not letting me create a, a, uh, Profile, for some reason, I can't extrude this. It's very, very peculiar. So let's go ahead and solve that first. We're going to go in here. And it looks like just this wasn't projected or something, which is very odd. I went ahead and projected that in. Now I can select it as a profile, which is fine. Let's go ahead and work on the bottom piece of this. This here, we'll do kind of the same thing. So I'll get my line tool, make these lines. Tell them to be nice and straight with some co uh, with some constraints here, horizontal, vertical. I can bring these in. And let's sketch dimension them out here to here. It's not working. Just escape, click away or whatever. Click here, here. There we go. Two here to here. Two. All right. Let's make our circle now. Two point two was the magic number. Make that into constraint or a construction line. Now we can go ahead and extrude these out. So I'm going to select those two, extrude, and I'm going to make this a dynamic extrusion. So I'm going to hide the top case, bring back the joy bonnet, and say I want the extent to object the surface of the joy bonnet. It gives me an error. It says the body can't do it. I got to change the chain faces to extended faces. Hit OK. And you can see here that it looks like that. That's probably the wrong thing. I probably selected the wrong um, surface, I think. I think I selected the wrong surface. So I'm going to go back into that and try to make sense of where the bottom of the joy bonnet is. I think that is right, actually. It just looked wrong for me. Now you can see that I, I hit OK on accident. I need to make sure the top case is on so that I can join that. It gets a little confusing sometimes because there's so much uh, weird things selected, but that looks OK now. If I bring back the joy bonnet, you can see there's no intersections happening. I can make this even look more solid. If I activate the main assembly, I can take a look and be like, OK, yeah, that's right. You look inside there too. That looks good. Let's go back into the case one. case. Active that component, activate that component, go close that. I'm going to add some fillets here just to kind of give it a little bit rounded edge here, a little bit sharp. So make it one. That's looking good. Now we got to figure out how to do a mirror. We can do that really easy with a mid plane. I'm going to click on mid plane and figure out the mid plane of this edge and that edge. That orange is our little mirror plane that we can use. Let's open up mirror and select our Faces, so faces is selected in the pattern type. I'll select these guys here and the ones down here. I think I gotta select all those faces. That looks good. Let's change, let's select our mid plane, that one there. 
Looks like there's a problem with our stuff. Looks like they're being created as a new body. Let's go ahead and hit um, join. Hit OK. This is a great example of, of what happens. You think you think it's all good, but it's not. Or you think, whatever, it doesn't matter what we think. We know what the problem was, and we're going to go ahead and solve it real quick. Just select the things that we need to select. Mirror that plane. Hit OK. And there we go. All right, that is so much better. So there's, there's the problem that it was. They were selected as bodies. They weren't joined to this whole assembly here, this whole solid. So now they are. If we bring back the joy bonnet, you can see that all of our, our header, our lines, our holes, our mounting holes are perfectly lined up where they need to be. And if we ever need to change the, the, the margin here, say I want this to be two, you can see that all that stuff updates because we're using coincidence uh, constraints. Our case can grow and we don't have to worry about remaking um, our standoffs. They are just fixed into place. So let's bring that back to probably three. I think three is a good number. So that's looking really good. Okay, that's it. <laughs> we did it. We have the buttons. We got our sketches. We got our top half. You know what we're going to do in the next tutorial? We're going to finish this up. We're going to make the Raspberry Pi. We're going to make that bottom here. We'll bring in the Raspberry Pi, and then we'll make the bottom, and the two pieces will be unified. <laughs> this will be really cool. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any tips or any suggestions or anything I covered here, please let me know. It'll help me out. And it'll help other folks too. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.